victims of arachnidia. Sometimes, even the best prepared expedition encounters problems for which its members have no answer and which threaten to overwhelm them. Under the present system of exploration and settlement, no outpost is so far removed that it is unable to call on the resources of the Federation for help or rescue. Unfortunately, the early colonists had no such recourse. Too often, their spirit of conquest and adventure took them far beyond contact with their fellows, and many were never heard of again. Some of these parties may yet be thriving on distant and otherwise unknown worlds, where their isolation from the rest of mankind has allowed their development to continue along a path free from any corporate influence. It is conceivable, even probable, that future exploration may rediscover worlds where human settlers have survived and evolved in such a way as to be unrecognizable to their fellow men. Others undoubtedly failed. In the face of threats against which they had no defense, one tragic example of this was found on the lonely, one-planet system of Epsilon Hydra, a G-Zero-type dwarf lying 136 light-years from Earth. Any world possessing a breathable atmosphere is of prime interest to the TTA, and as this solitary world did have an Earth-like mantle of air, a survey ship was dispatched as soon as the discovery had been made. Its report was not encouraging, as water appeared to be scarce, and the arid surface boasted little in the way of vegetation. Such scrubby growth as existed at all was concentrated at the poles, and although there was quite a high degree of cloud cover over most of the globe, its precipitation rate was extremely low. There was little variation between night and day, as the small amount of light which penetrated the cloud banks from the small sun was weak. However, although the rocky planet lacked appeal as a possible colonial world, the preliminary survey indicated that it could have some value as a mining site, and a specialized research team was sent to carry out a surface study. The geologists had spent over three uncomfortable months collecting samples and mapping the planet's surface before they turned their attention to one of the many mountainous regions of the planet. During one of the early treks in this terrain, they stumbled across an area containing a number of large cobweb-like structures. They were composed of an immensely strong material which defied analysis, and in places were so thickly distributed that it was impossible to pass. They seemed to be concentrated in specific areas with clear ground between. After circumnavigating several of these remarkable phenomena, the team saw another ahead of them. They were reluctant to make yet another detour, and were on the point of retracing their steps when one of the party noticed an unusual rock structure in the heart of the webby mass. Whereas the terrain had always been jagged and angular, this outcrop was smoother and stood apart from the jumble of stone surrounding it. They decided to get as close as possible in order to take a hollow vid record before returning to base and clambered over the crags towards it. The closer they approached, the more unnatural the object looked until they suddenly realized that this was no rock formation. As they stood at the edge of the web field, they stared in bewilderment at the unmistakable outline of a spacecraft. It was even possible to identify the ship as belonging to a type that had been developed during the earlier years of planetary settlement. Although the ship had obviously made a crash landing, it had not been destroyed, but time and the elements had taken their toll, and the portion that was visible was in very poor condition. Whether the webs that enmeshed it were more recent was impossible to tell, but the team decided to return and report their find. The next day, the survey team flew directly to the spot and landed as near to the wreck as the web permitted. Using lasers, they cut their way with difficulty through the tough strands until they were beside the corroded and collapsing ruin. Items of old-fashioned equipment could be seen scattered among the rocks, but only the most durable objects had survived the centuries. The unfortunate passengers had probably died during the forced landing, and those that survived would probably have perished soon after, if not from radiation exposure from the reactor, then from lack of food or water. Knowledge of this planet's existence has only been gained in recent years, 
so it is likely that the settler ship was already in trouble and tried to land on the first planet it found. No fauna had been seen on the planet, and it was supposed that it was devoid of animal life, but bones found near the wreck demonstrated otherwise, as they did not belong to any species that the colonists would have carried. It was later learned that there were a few nocturnal creatures living among the crags in deep caves and fissures. The idea that one of them was responsible for the curious cobwebs was later disproved, as analysis found them to be a plant form which drew nourishment from airborne moisture and particles of organic matter. Nevertheless, their great similarity to the structures formed by the spiders found on Earth led to the name the planet is now known by.